The very first hotel review we ever posted was of the Swan Hotel on Walt Disney World property in Orlando. We were actually staying there in March 2020 when the pandemic was declared in the U.S. and Disney World shut down for what we thought at the time would just be two weeks. The Swan shares a campus with its sister hotel, the Dolphin, and since then a third hotel related to Swan and Dolphin has opened called the Swan Reserve. Last fall, we were in Orlando a few days as I was attending a conference at the Dolphin, so we stayed there, and while I was working, Jack even walked over to the new Swan Reserve to see what that was like. We are going to share a tour of these hotels, including our room at the Dolphin, and talk about the dining options and all their amenities in this video. While these hotels are on Disney property, they are not technically Disney hotels. They're managed by Marriott, so if you're a Marriott Bonvoy member like us, you can get member rates and earn points with each stay here. It's free to join if you're not already a member. Here is the check-in desk in the lobby when you first enter. And there's a lobby bar called Fins. The Swan and Dolphin Hotels are on Epcot Resorts Boulevard. They are within easy walking distance of Epcot and other Epcot resorts, including the Yacht Club, Beach Club, and Boardwalk. We have tours of all those hotels on our channel as well. The lobby is one place where you might notice the sea creatures decorating the resort don't look much like a dolphin. Those statues were created more along the lines of the mythological designs of dolphins centuries ago when the dolphin was associated with Neptune, the Roman god of the sea. The swan and dolphin lack the overt Disney theming seen at most Disney hotels, though the lobby does have a couple photo ops that remind you that you are indeed at Disney World. Now it's on to our room tour. We were on the 11th floor of the Dolphin. As you enter, there's a closet with sliding doors that contained a safe, an iron, ironing board, some hanging space, a luggage rack. And by the time we filmed, it contained our luggage also. Next, you come to a table with an ice bucket, a couple free bottles of water, and a coffee maker. There is a mirror and a magnifying makeup mirror here, so you can get ready in this area if another family member is using the bathroom mirror. Then you enter the bathroom and see all of the usuals. You'll notice there is a door separating the sink area from the toilet and shower. The hotel provides Gilchrist and Soames soaps, shampoos, and lotions. They have a combination bathtub and shower. And there is a retractable clothesline you can use to hang wet swimsuits or towels. This room had two double beds with a nightstand in between them. The flat panel TV is connected to the internet so you can use your Netflix or Amazon accounts to binge watch your favorites. Or you can click on the YouTube logo to catch up with what is going on on your favorite YouTube channel. The TV sits on a dresser with four drawers and your mini fridge. The drawers have a reasonable amount of space if you are a vacation unpacker. Free reading material is also supplied. There's a desk with a chair, as well as another chair in the room. This was our view out of our window. It was a lovely view, but there are ropes all over the place because work crews were painting the facade of the building during our stay. We had a view of the lagoon where the friendship boats docked below. If you find this video helpful or enjoyable, or not the worst thing you ever watched, 
please click the like button to register your support. We appreciate it. Let's talk about the amenities. First, the Swan and Dolphin and the new Swan Reserve all have over 360,000 square feet combined of convention halls, ballrooms, and meeting rooms to accommodate groups of various sizes for a variety of events. There were several conferences and conventions going on at these hotels in addition to the work conference that I was attending. The Dolphin also houses the Mandara Spa. Spas aren't really our thing, but if it is your thing, you can book a reservation at this full service spa and salon. There are a lot of outdoor activities to enjoy on days when you aren't at a theme park. The Swan and Dolphin share several pools, including a couple of quieter lap pools and the most popular grotto pool. It has a waterfall flowing over the side of this cave area where you can relax in a lounge chair out of the Florida sun. And you can watch the backside of water. There's also a water slide in this pool as well as a couple of hot tubs. There are a couple pool bars near the quieter lap pools. There are numerous games outside that families can enjoy, as well as a playground and a white sand beach. Of course, you can't swim in the lagoon, even though there is a sandy beach, but they also have swan paddle boats that hotel guests can use. So did we go for a sail through the lagoon on a swan boat? Of course we did. This is the Dolphins Fitness Center. The Swan and the Swan Reserve both have their own fitness centers as well. There's also a jogging and walking trail on the Swan and Dolphin property. Like most resorts on Disney property, the Dolphin has a game room. There are several dining options at the Dolphin Hotel too. This is Fuel, a grab-and-go store that also has pizza and frozen yogurt available certain hours of the day. This is Peekaboo. They serve tacos, burritos, roasted chicken family meals, and pizza. Here is the fountain. They have a menu that includes burgers, but they're perhaps best known for their ice cream. Celebrity chef Todd English has a restaurant called Blue Zoo in the Dolphin. This restaurant serves coastal cuisine and fresh seafood. It's a signature dining experience, which is Disney speak for very expensive. We ate at a different signature dining restaurant inside the Dolphin called Shula's Steakhouse. Originally opened by the winningest coach in NFL history, Don Shula, it's themed to the Miami Dolphins' 1972 perfect season where they went undefeated. They have over 450 wines to choose from. And as a signature dining experience, most entrees cost between $40 and $70. That does not include your sides, which are sold separately. We ate here with a couple of friends and the food was all so good. One member of our party got Maryland style crab cakes with roumelade sauce for $46. Another person and I both ordered prime rib which came with Yorkshire pudding for $54. Jack ordered the salmon for $39. We all shared some sides, including sautéed mushrooms for $14, a baked potato for $12, and macaroni and cheese for $14. It was a delicious meal, but it was not something we could afford to do on a regular basis. So while Alice enjoyed her conference, I went to see what the new Swan Reserve Hotel is like. You just have to cross the street behind the Swan and Dolphin property to get to it. 
The Swan Reserve is a small boutique hotel with 349 rooms, which is about half the number of rooms that the Swan has. And the Swan, in turn, has about half the number of rooms as the Dolphin Hotel. As you enter the main doors, you're on the ground floor, which is where they have conference and event space. You take an escalator up one floor to the main lobby. The check-in desk is opposite the escalator, and to your left will be the lobby bar. There's also a Disney vacation planning desk, as well as a nearby seating area in this lobby. The pool is located on the rooftop of either the second or third floor, I forget which. Guests at Swan Reserve can also use the Swan and Dolphin pools as well if they'd like. The main restaurant at the reserve is Amare, a Mediterranean restaurant. They also have a coffee shop called Grounds, as well as a pool bar called Tangerine. Combined, the Swan Reserve, the Swan, and the Dolphin all have a total of 22 restaurants on site. Now, we didn't stay here, so obviously we didn't see the rooms, but Marriott.com did give us a good idea of what some of these rooms are like. If you want, you can just walk to Epcot from these hotels, but they do have friendship boats that will sail you through the lagoon to get to Epcot or Hollywood Studios. The resorts also have buses to take you to Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom parks. The Dolphin also had a Disney souvenir shop with some official park merchandise available. Rooms at these resorts start around $300 a night most of the year, which is actually a pretty good deal for how nice these hotels are. You're paying moderate resort prices for an experience that's closer to what you get at the Disney Deluxe Resorts. Though there is a $40 a night resort fee and a parking fee if you bring a car with you. So who would want to stay here? Well, this is a good option if you want to stay near Epcot, but you want to spend less money than you would at Yacht Club, Beach Club, or Boardwalk. It's also a good option if you want to stay on Disney property, but not be inundated with Disney theming every moment of your trip. And this is a good option if you want to earn or redeem Marriott Bonvoy membership points. We enjoyed our stay at Dolphin last fall just as much as we enjoyed our stay at the Swan in 2020. Click the link at the end to see the first hotel review that we ever did of the Swan. But note, we did get better at making videos over time. Or click on our hotels playlist to tour some hotels that we've stayed at since then. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Be sure to click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can join us as we're traveling through.